Hello everyone and welcome to WASP 101. I'm Andrea Rossi, the developer of WASP. In this tutorial we are going to ex continue exploring how to edit different elements of WASP while we are aggregating in order to differentiate the uh, structures that we are building. Uh, as if in the previous tutorial we have been looking at how to edit connections, in this tutorial we're going to be instead looking at how we can edit the geometry of a part as well as either other attributes of it in order to create more interesting aggregations. What this would allow us to do is it would allow us to go from a certain type of an aggregation with like very rigid orientation to an aggregation that shows much more chaotic behavior, but also it would allow us to go to create an aggregation that shows different types of orientations and different types of behavior in different parts of itself. Let's get started. If you download the Rhino file that you will find in the description box, you're gonna find two separate parts. We find a part that is a simple uh, hexagonal extrusion, which as you can see does not have any connection created on them. And then you find the part that is this sort of X shape connector, where you can see that this dense in both direction fits exactly on the hexagon which has two connections created on them and one of the peculiar things of this element is also that it's not made of a single part but it's made of two separate uh, geometries so what we're gonna do in uh, this tutorial is we're gonna see how we can use grasshopper to define certain elements of a part in the case of the hexagonal extrusion we're gonna see how we can use grasshopper to parametrically create uh, different connections and different number of connections on the part and then we're going to see how this X com the X-shape component can be uh, edited during aggregations by rotating it around itself in order to create uh, different results. Let's start by importing our uh, hexagonal extrusion. We're going to create a geometry component where we're going to right click, set one geometry and select our hexagonal prism. And so what we want to do is we want to be able to create a variable number of connections on these faces. And to do that, we are going to first of all, explode our BRAP with the deconstruct BRAP component. And so if we want to isolate the, uh, the faces that are on the sides and avoid the ending of this element, we can do that by simply making sure that we select all, only the faces that have four sides. To do that, we are going to get the eight faces of this hexagonal prism and deconstruct them once more. And this will return us the edges. And as you can see from the data tree, we have some faces that have four edges and some faces that have six. If we use a list length component, to count the length of each of these edge lists. And then we use a equality component to check if this is equal to four. We are then able to use a, a cal pattern component to select only the faces that we are interested. Of course, we have to right click and flatten the P input. And so if now I go on and hide what I have, or maybe I'm gonna go in wireframe mode. You see that now in this component, I have only the uh, sides. Great. Now that we selected the sides, what we wanna do is we wanna be able to divide them in a variety of, uh, in a custom way in order to create a different number of connections. To do that, we're gonna use a component which is called isotrim. And so what isotrim does is it's allowing us to divide each of the six surfaces in a defined number of ways in both U and V direction. So we're going to connect our S to isotrim, so our surfaces to the S of isotrim. And then we're going to create a component which is called divide domain squared here, which will allow us to take the domain of the six surfaces and divide them in a number of uh, times. So we're going to select and set the U to 1 as we want to have directions, divisions only on the longer side. And we're going to, for example, set the divisions on V on to 5. 
If now we plug this, we see that we get a weird behavior and the reason is that we have to apply all these domains to all the surfaces. And to do that, we have to right click and select graft. And now you see that we have this, each of the surface divided in five pieces and we're actually able to edit how many pieces this is made of. Great. Now that we did this, we can continue and we can take the center of each of this and we're going to do this with an area component. And these are going to be the centers of our connections. And if you know what we did with WASP, if you remember, if I go under elements and get connection from direction, to create a connection we need two, info, two levels of two elements. So we need the center of it and we need a direction for this connection. In this case, we're going to create connections all oriented in the same way and they're going to be oriented along the x-axis. So to create the line that gives the orientation to the connection, we are going to go and create a line STL where we're going to connect our centroid as the start. We're going to create a unit Z, sorry, a unit X vector for the direction. And then the length, we could leave it to, to whatever, but let's make it length 5 so that we can actually see it. And now this is going to be the direction of our connections. So what we can do now is we can create our connections by connecting our geometry that we have at the beginning, connecting the center from our area component, and connecting the line STL to the up. And you see that we generated all our planes following our geometry correctly. Now we can generate a part. And so we're going to go to parts and get wasp basic part. We're going to name this part uh, stick. And then we have to assign the geometry, which we can go and grab from the beginning. And then we're not going to assign our connections in connection. And there we go. We created our part. Now, this was one way that we can see how we can use the geometry of the part to generate the elements that we need. And now what we can, of course, do is we can go back and at any time change the number of connections that we want on the side. And we are going to get um, this updating on our part. Great. Let's go on and create our second part. Now for our second part, we're going to want to create a part which we are able to rotate, which we're able we get to get the top part and rotate it around itself in order to change the angle at which the hexagonal prism and this connector will connect to each other. So we are going to import the bottom geometry and the bottom connection elements and the top geometry and the top connection elements separately. Let's go on and start doing that. And so we're going to create a geometry component. Right click, set one geometry and select the bottom part of the X. Create a point component. Right click, set one point and select the bottom point that we can see here. And create a curve component. Right click, set one curve and select the bottom curve. Now we're going to move a bit downer and we're going to repeat this for the top part. We're going to create a geometry, right click, set one geometry and pick the top part. We're going to create a point component, right click, set one point and select the top point. And then we're going to create a curve component, right click, set one curve and select the top curve. Now that we imported everything that we have in Rhino, we can go on, select everything and hit our gray light bulb to hide everything. And so for our top element, it's going to stay as it is. And so we can go on and create a connection from these elements. So we're going to go on and say geometry wasp, we're going to get connection from direction. And so we're going to assign our geometry, our center and our up vector. 
And so here we go, we create our connection. While from the for the top part, what we're gonna be want to be able to do is we want to be able to rotate this geometry around itself as well as rotate the connection with it. To do that, we are gonna first of all find the uh, volume centroid of this element. So we're gonna do that with the volume component, which is gonna give us the centroid there. We are then going to create a rotate component where we are going to connect our geometry to rotate, our centroid in P as the rotation axis, and then we are going to right click on A, make sure that we set it to degrees in order to create degree angle, and then we are going to create a, um, a slider set for example to 45 and connect it to the A input. And so we see that now if I rotate this slider, I'm actually able to rotate this geometry around itself. Great, as we wanna carry the uh, connection together with the geometry, we wanna copy paste this rotate twice and connect in G once the point and once the curve. And now you see that if I go and rotate, my connection follows as well in the rotation. Great. Now what we want to do is we want to create our part. So we want to first create our connection with this information. So we're going to go and get another connection from direction, connect the output of rotate for the geometry, and then the output of rotate for the point and the output of rotate for the curve. And here we go. So now you see that our connection effectively follows our part as it moves along. All right, now we can build our part. The first thing that we have to do to build our part is we have to merge these two, these two geometries into one. And we are going to do that with a solid union component. where we're going to connect the geometry from the first element and the rotated geometry from the second element. And this is going to return us a, a solid geometry. We are then going to go under parts, was basic part, and create our part. We are going to start by setting a name for it and we're going to call this uh, connector. We are going to set our solid union as the geometry. And then for the connections, we are going to create a merge component and connect one connection and the second connection. And then plug this in the connection tab. I'm going to just take all this thing and move it a bit forward so that it's in line with the other part. And so now we have our parts set up. And what we can always do is we can always go and edit them in order to create, to change them. Now what we're going to do is we're going to create a merge component. And we're going to go on and connect the two uh, parts in there. We're going to make sure to right click and flatten we are then going to go on and start creating our aggregation. And to do that, we are going to go under aggregation, stochastic aggregation. Of course, as always, you could do everything with a field aggregation, but in this case, we do it for stochastic aggregation simply because it's quicker. But everything that we are seeing will work exactly the same way for a field aggregation. And so what we are going to do is we are going to get the merge component, connect it to the part input. We are going to say that we want 120 parts for now. For the rules, we are going to be using a rule generator. And in order to create a more interesting aggregation, we are going to connect our parts. And then we are going to place a Boolean toggle 
connected to self p and make sure that we leave it on false. So we are saying that a part cannot connect to itself. So each hexagon will always and only connect to a connector and each connector will connect to the hexagon. So we're going to have an alternation of these parts and create a more interesting pattern. We are then going to go on and connect the rules. And finally, we're going to create our reset button. So we want to go on and see what we created. And first of all, we're going to split our parts in two. So we're going to go to parts, filter parts by name. And I'm going to have the first filter to filter for parts name stick. And then I'm going to copy paste it and filter for connectors. I think I've done something wrong in the name. Sorry, connector, not connectors. We are then going to extract the part geometry for both of them. And then we're going to create a custom preview for both of them. With a swatch. And we're going to maybe assign it a different color. So now we see that we are creating an aggregation that has a certain look. And when we reset, we can get different results. But what we can also go is we can go back to the parameters that we use to set our part, change them, and then generate new aggregations every time we hit the button. Not only this, but we can also, let's say for example, create 50 parts. And then we can go modify the angle. For example, I'm going to go to 45 degrees. And if now I'm going to go from 50 to 100, I'm going to be adding new parts with the top part twisted. And if now I'm going to go and, for example, change it to 90 degrees and add one another 100, so go to 200. Now I'm going to be adding connections that will follow the 90 degrees angle. So we see that what we can do is we can really have this sequence that allows us to change these parts and create custom aggregations. One thing that might be useful to do is as we have the parts which are logically the same, but geometrically they are changed, it might be useful to be able to distinguish the part according to the angle they've been created at. In order to do that, we can go back to our uh, connector part and we can create a attribute that we can get under elements wasp attribute, which we are going to assign the ID angle. And as a value, we are going to assign the value of the slider we are using to create the angle. So every time we change the angle, we are going to store an attribute in the part that records at which angle this part is following. We are going to then connect this to the attributes. Now I'm going to reset, for example. I mean, in this case, it's all 90. But I'm going to, for example, create, let's say, 50 parts with a 90 degrees orientation then change it to, for example, 60 and grow to 100. Then change it to 30 and go to 150. And then change it to 0 and go to 200. So now these connectors that we'll see have all of them different angles. But what we've done is we use this attribute here to store the angle inside the part. What we can then do is we can go to our filter part where we extracted our connector and we can go to elements and say get attribute by name. 
we're going to connect our part and then as name we are going to say angle and now this is going to retrieve for each part its angle you can right click and flatten the list and see that we have the angle for each part if we want to visualize it we can create a remap component to remap these values between a range of 0 1 we can use a bounds component to find minimum and maximum and then we are going to see it's 0 1 and so now we are remapping these values between a range of 0 and 1 through this we can then use a gradient component to create different colors that are going to show us what each angle is following if now I'm going to connect these colors here we see that I'm able to visualize on the on the structure what color each part what angle each part is following and I could go back and hide a little bit everything and so now you can see that I can do all kind of interesting stuff for example I could do something similar to what we do with our part so I could create 10 parts at a 45 degrees angle which create a variety of different orientations in the structure and I'm gonna then change this angle to 0 and for example create move the parts up to 200 and you see that what I have is I have these huge blocks that all follow this far 5 initial orientations that were created by the initial parts so you see that we can very quickly edit an aggregation and create very complex uh, looking geometries by just editing certain parameters of the parts now a little disclaimer unfortunately when you are modifying the geometry of the part it's at the current stage not possible to save these when you want to save an aggregation I'm already working on implementing this uh, in the future version of WASP where you will be able to save the full geometry of the part in order to uh, keep track of the fact that that geometry was changed but for now unfortunately if you're gonna save the aggregation you're gonna be losing that information so that's it for this tutorial that's what I wanted to show you I hope that this makes it a little bit more clear how you can create more um, more complex and more customized aggregation by editing the parameters and so you can just think that you can do this in the similar way by modifying all kind of geometric parameters of a part and being able to achieve very customized results by having the elements transform along the aggregation so I hope everything was clear if you have any question about this please let me know in the comments and uh, for now this is it Thanks for watching and see you in the next tutorial. Bye.